everyone and welcome back to the Traction Channel for another Assetto Corsa Competizione track guide. This edition brings us to the heart of Italian motorsport culture and the cathedral of speed that is Monza. This is one of the fastest circuits on earth and it's all about judging your braking distances and getting your margins right. It is also the one place you definitely don't want to find yourself starting mid-pack in a public lobby, as I'm sure many of you will have found out. Hopefully, this video will give you some tips for Monza that can get you out front and avoid the carnage that inevitably ensues into the Retifilio chicane. In this video, we have gone with the BMW M6, one of the quickest cars in straight line and therefore always a strong pick for this circuit. Now it's time to jump into the analysis. As you head into the Retifilio chicane, brake just before the 150 marker. Stay on the white line, keeping the car nice and straight until you reach the turning point, not long before the actual corner markers. Since this is such a big braking zone, quite often you will find yourself needing to slow down the car all the way until the apex, so if you need to, use a little bit of trail braking as you turn in and get down to first gear. Use the flat kerb on the inside, but avoid the sausage kerb. Stay over to the right if you can, and flick back over to the left for the second part, aiming again to use the flat kerb, but avoiding the sausage kerb. Getting the power nice and early, opening up the steering and using all of the exit runoff space. It's worth noting that this BMW has good straight line performance compared to other cars, but isn't as good on the brakes, so braking points may be slightly later if you pick another car. Shorten Curva Grande as much as you can by keeping the car in tight, and get yourself fully over to the right in preparation for the Della Roggia chicane. Brake just before the orange mark on the Armco, staying on the white line as you do so and shifting down to second. Again, aim to hit the flat curb whilst avoiding the sausage curb. Change direction quickly and try to get the power down immediately, with the same rules again applying for the curbs for the right hand section. Some cars like the Mercedes can be set up softly to ride the bigger curbs, so at least give them a try when testing. Use all of the exit curb and hope that the bumps don't slow you down too much. For Lesmo 1, you want to start braking just before the orange marking on the right hand side armco barrier. It's not an ideal reference point, but with no distance markers it can be quite tricky, so just make sure you practice this and find the point that feels best for you. Start turning in reasonably early, aiming to put two tyres on the inside curb. This should help the car pull round without much understeer, allowing you to get on the power nice and early and open up the steering. Use all of the exit curb that you require to keep the speed up. For Lesmo 2, start braking just a touch before the 50 meter board. Change down to third and aim to ride the slightly flatter red and white curb whilst avoiding the raised green section. Again, some cars will handle this better than others through here, so if the green area does work for you, by all means feel free to use it. The main priority here is to get on the power nice and early to give yourself the maximum amount of speed onto the straight, again utilising the exit runoff area. The next section through Ascari is another that will be heavily affected by car choice and setup, so bear this in mind when making your selections. As you approach the Scarry, make sure you're all the way over to the right. Start braking just after the orange mark on the Armco before the 100 board. Change down to third and aim to get your car turned in and over those big curbs on the inside. They look a bit daunting, but if you can set your car up to ride over these without issue, then you will save a huge amount of lap time. I tend to position the car so that I'm about 75% over the yellow and black strips. When you hit them at the right angle and speed, it feels super stable and very satisfying, so it's worth practicing. As you exit, make sure you set yourself up to ride the right hand side red and white curbs. You want to maintain as much throttle as you can through here without understeering, just watch out as some cars do like to step out a wee bit on these curbs. Once you've hugged the curb all the way around, aim to smash the left hand apex curb and short shift to fourth. This is similar to the other curb, if your car is set up well and you hit this at the right speed and angle, you will comfortably sail over it and gain lots of satisfying lap time. Otherwise, the curb will throw the car right and see you understeering wide, so again be careful to learn this. Make sure that you use all of the exit curbing and matting. The Siskari section really does make or break the lap and either put you in a good mood or a bad mood heading into the Parabolica. You want to brake at around the 100 meter board, turning in at around the 50 and trail braking in for a nice early apex in third gear. Try and focus on slowing it down enough to avoid any unwanted understeer. Getting the power nice and early, opening out the steering and letting the car run out. The only thing to look out for here is the yellow sausage curb that infamously launched Alex Peroni's F3 car in 2019. Whatever you do, don't hit it. As long as your line and speed are okay through the apex of Parabolica, you will have nothing to worry about, except obviously the car is right on your tail about to steal a massive slipstream down the pit street. Yeah, worry about those. Anyway, that is a lap of Monza on ACC, and now let's play it for you at full speed so you can see how it all strings together.
here is the lap time I managed to set in this video. We've also put up a couple of reference laps, these being AM, Pro-AM and Pro, for you guys to aim for depending on your ability level. So there we have our lap of Monza. The best way to practice this one is to start braking slightly earlier for each corner than you need to, and then ease it further back every lap. By doing this, you will find the perfect point for your car and setup combination, without getting overly frustrated in the process. The Mercedes is also a good pick here, as it rides the curves wonderfully, as you may have seen in some of the other track guides. In general, it's just about learning how your car reacts over each curb, and getting used to consistently hitting the right parts of them. To finish up, I'm going to summarise the key points in 10 seconds. Heavy braking for Edfilio and focus on your apex as an exit. Short and curve a grande, bounce from curb to curb through Dylan Roggio. Be conservative through Lesmo 1 and smooth through Lesmo 2, thinking about the exit speed. Destroy the curbs at Ascari, use the runoff trail brake and hug the line through Parabolka and don't catch a flight on the exit. So that concludes this edition of our track guide series. As always, thank you for watching and we really hope that this has helped as many of you as possible find some extra lap time. Let us know how you've been getting on in the comments below and if you're enjoying the series, be sure to leave us a like and subscribe to the channel. It really does help us grow and bring you all more of the content that you deserve. Until next time, keep it pinned, thanks for watching and have a great day.